sorry. Um, so a little bit of the um, um, on the uh, uh, backstory on the on the web and a little bit of the context of where we are, uh, where we have been, where we are now, and perhaps where we might be going. Um, so at um, uh, so at some point uh, after the uh, World War II, after we defeated the Germans, we asked ourselves why why were we able to defeat them and you know, we just bombed the heck out of them. Uh, there was no way for them to communicate and says, oh, well, you know, um, how, uh, what, what if that would happen to us? What, uh, how could we survive uh, somebody uh, you know, destroying our communication capabilities? Uh, and so you know, a lot of folks, uh, really uh, smart people, start to think about this. Um, how can we create something that could not be, or, or something that could withstand um, that kind of uh, attack. Uh, and, uh, and some folks in the military, they, you know, uh, thinking about it, they, they say, oh, well, what if there's uh, some huge uh, network that had, that was so distributed that was, there was no one place to, uh, to destroy it, that they were so, so redundant, right, that uh, uh, if, you, if you destroyed a certain piece of it, you could always have some other redundant way of communicating. Uh, so, so I started thinking of, uh, of different ways, right, of, of having uh, lots and lots of uh, net, uh, machines connected to one another, uh, and, uh, and 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 what are the what are the, uh, the the protocols of communicating between them? Uh, and there were a lot of competing uh, competing uh, 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 mechanisms and standards. Uh, at some point, uh, we uh, we settled on one uh, uh, UTC TCP IP. Uh, and, and once we were able to settle on a, on a particular one, not, not necessarily it was the best, right? But uh, it's, uh, uh, as many times it is, it's a very organic way that, that uh, some standards are accepted and some others are not. Uh, but once once we uh, agreed on a standard, everything started to grow uh, exponentially. Right? A lot of people uh, were able to settle on that and focus on and a lot of things that, uh, on what could you build on, on such a, a, a protocol? Uh, and uh, a lot of the, the, the original um, uh, implementations were that, uh, that uh, these machines that used to be disconnected, uh, they, uh, oh, just going to sleep? No. Still recording? Yeah. Is it recording? It is. Uh, a, a lot of these machines that used to be disconnected, uh, they used to have access to a local uh, file system, right? You know, the, those big drum machines, right? That, uh, uh, and, and folks wanted to be able to uh, to be able to access. Now that we're connected, hey, how about you know? I like you know, I know you have some information, some data over there that I would like to have access to it. Uh, and so they were coming up with mechanisms that would allow you to you know, transfer those files between machines. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and some of these machines were uh, a little more faster than others. Uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and after using it in quite a while, some machines had this, a specific uh, uh, role of, of just serving right, these files uh, for, for others. Uh, and so, so a lot of, a lot of, after using it in such a, in such a role, uh, you know, it, that started to make itself into the jargon. Uh, that oh these, this was this was the server or the, or the machine uh, that uh, we were able to retrieve the information from and and I am the client right if you use the client here's the server uh, not not that you know these machines were any different right they're both you know both CPUs both both pretty big machines perhaps uh, but you know some of these machines have the specific role of being the repository of uh, centralized data right for others. To go and retrieve data from that same uh, server, right? uh, and uh, and this this uh, this architecture or this way of thinking about the relationship between these two machines has made it up to today. You know, today we still right, think of this as one of, as the fundamental architecture of the of the internet. Right? You have clients and servers. Right? The roles. Right? Of, uh, have this little machine here uh, that is my little client that can goes out to some bigger machine who has the responsibility of giving me information. Not that my little machine could also be a server, right? Any machine could be a server, right? It's just that it has dedicated software running on it that specifically gives us the role of the server. Make sense? Uh, 
So, so it became very common that uh, depending on the type of information or the type of uh, uh, f uh, uh, data that you were retrieving, uh, you had different different protocols of retrieving that information, right? Um, and also on the on the client side, on the on the you also had different types of viewers, right, of consuming that data that was transferred from the server over to the client. Uh, so depending on the on the type, you would have different viewers, right? Different different consumers that would be able to display that that content, right? Uh, and and there were many different com competing pieces of software that would be were dedicated for different types of content. Yes, uh, and 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 this was this was a great you know this this exploded uh, was was you know, was used all throughout the, the military also. Uh, eventually, was opened up for uh, to various research institutions, uh, universities, and uh, and and you know it was never thought that it would be anything other than uh, for military purposes for defending the homeland. Um, there was there was never any intention that it would become uh, any that would have had have any um, economic or financial uh, benefit whatsoever, right? Um, uh, but once it started being, uh, once it became open to a larger community, and uh, and you had lots of ideas on on, on how to use this, and uh, uh, a lot of folks started to think on well, what what is you know, how could you know what are other uh, uh, in, in aspects of that I, that I could I could use this large uh, connection of machines all over the world, right? And uh, and um, uh, so somebody at the uh, in a physics uh, uh, scientist thought of, uh, oh well, why can't we use this at, uh, to be able to perhaps share uh, our research information, right? So, so if I if I if I publish a paper uh, and it's referencing other papers, right? Wouldn't it be great? You know, this would be a great platform uh, to be able to share that information with other colleagues, right? And for folks to review my my my, my content uh, and. Uh, uh, so what, what Tim Berners-Lee uh, thought of was says, well, can we marry together the, uh, the, the mechanisms of fetching the data uh, with, and marry that together with also the mechanism that consumes that data, right? That, that, that is also able to render that data, right? Uh, and if we could all standardize on the, on, the, on the content here, on how it's formatted, uh, we could easily you know, create uh, an easy way of sharing this information across uh, across uh, various various uh, researchers, he you know his point of view was, or his uh, uh, particular use case uh, was just to share research uh, papers. Right? That was the, the, the original intention. Uh, so so he married together uh, the mechanism of fetching the data with the mechanism of consuming that data, right? Uh, along with coming up with a standard uh, formatting mechanism of what the what the what the uh, resource. Uh, what the file system that you, the file that you wanted to, uh, to, uh, uh, to extract from the from the remote server, right? Uh, and unbeknownst to him, right, he uh, he uh, 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 he invented right, the uh, the World Wide Web, right? The uh, uh, this uh, this uh, took on um, folks at other research institutions started to use it. Uh, they it, it very much lowered the bar, right, uh, for ease of uh, uh, of um, of sharing information, of, of 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 relating information, of of pieces of information that 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 uh, was able to merge information from various uh, disparate uh, uh, different places, right? That could be able to refer to different places on the on the network, right? And uh, it just it just uh, took the the research community by storm, right? Uh, and tons of uh, students also uh, caught on to this, and and uh, and the rest is history, right? Uh, now, when it, when it was open to the to the a broader community, the, uh, when, when it was when it, when commercial uh, entities started to look at this and how they could build uh, on top of this uh, uh, on top of this, uh, they 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 started thinking, well, how how, how can we make money out of this, right? And uh, and so so they started, uh, so what applications could we build on this? What killer apps, right? Could we could we build on this that folks would find it uh, useful, right? So so they started. You know, Ways to uh, message each other, to, to send uh, emails, to, to transfer information, and, and try to commercialize some of this, right? And uh, and on top of using this new 
uh, this, this, this brand new way of, of very easily rendering some of this content, right? Uh, and uh, and they quickly uh, reach the limit of what that original uh, stack, technology stack, uh, would allow us to, to, to do, right? Uh, one, of, one of the limits that uh, uh, they, they hit was that, that th this, this, uh, this content here that was being rendered by you know, this new thing called the browser, um, uh, that, that content was always static, right? If I, if I went and fetched a particular piece of content, it was always the same piece of content. Uh, so people started thinking, well, how could we make that maybe perhaps dynamic, you know? That uh, if, I, if, I, if I come to view this content in the morning uh, and I come to view it later uh, in the evening, uh, maybe I should, I want to see different things. Perhaps it's an application that uh, can show you the weather, right? And all throughout, throughout the day, the weather changes, right? Throughout the, uh, um, the different, uh, uh, perhaps give me a forecast for the next five days, uh, the pace should change over time, right? Uh, so it says, well, the only way that it could change is that uh, if, if this content, this, this uh, thing called HTML, if I could generate HTML dynamically, right? Depending on some logic, depending on some executable. Right? So they started looking and said, well, how could we execute this? Right now, uh, it used to be that, um, right, you, 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 you refer to a, a piece of, uh, of text, a particular HTML, using this brand new thing called the URL, right, where you, 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 you Provided the uh, the protocol, you provided some path, right, and then the last was referring to a hard coded, you know, HTML piece of content. Right? Uh, so they were looking, well, how can we do that so that it's it's a uh, HTML is is dynamic, not 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 static. Uh, so so they're looking at ways. Well, for this to be dynamic, I would need to be able to execute something on the server, right? That the output of this execution would be some. Uh, some piece of text that then uh, would be sent over to the client. And from the client's point of view, this content has always been uh, static, right? But from the server's point of view, the content is dynamic, right? The server would compute this brand new HTML document uh, and then serve it to the client. The client didn't care, right? As far as the client is concerned, uh, the client will always get this, the HTML content that it would ex be expecting and it would render it on the client side, yes? Uh, so again, this this was a huge leap forward, right? And uh, and and there there were a lot of competing uh, technologies that are still uh, around today and will be for for, for a while. Uh, uh, you know, took on this this uh, this new idea and created many competing uh, 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 te technology stacks that are are are, um, are very invoked still today. You know, PHP, you know, JSP, uh, ASP, right? Uh, Ruby on Rails. A lot of a lot of these uh, uh, te technologies are server side technologies, right? That they compute some content dynamically, you know, based on some logic, some data model, some uh, you know, some some fairly fairly sophisticated uh, uh, framework, right? That allows you to generate this dynamically. Yes. Now, all of these I'm going to refer to as a big umbrella, right? That these are server side, right? Technologies, yes, right. We're not going to be doing any of this, right? Okay. Uh, this is still big, in the, in 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 uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in it will be for quite a while. Uh, more of the the uh, uh, lately, a lot of the, uh, the the interest has been moved away from this, right? More towards the client side, right? So I just want to show. Uh, where we have been, right, and how, what were, what were the impetus, right, for moving a lot of the, a lot of the great technology that was generated here, right, a lot of the great uh, ideas have been, have been slowly migrating over to the client side. Right? Today you see a lot of uh, excitement on the client side, and, and but a lot of those ideas that you see today on, on, on client side frameworks were developed a long, long time ago, right, on the server side and have. And and um and and but are, they're now being repackaged, right? Represented, right? Now being used on the clients. Why the client side? Uh, well, on the on the uh, as 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 this uh, as these technologies became so successful, right? More and more uh, dynamic content was uh, was uh, was being generated. More and more applications. A lot of the 
uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, the desktop applications that we, we, uh, we were uh, familiar with started to be migrated onto the, onto the server side applications, right? So the same kind of uh, implementation that you would expect of running on a desktop, right, a native application, uh, you, you started seeing uh, applications that were exclusively running on the web dynamically, right? Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, and they were very, very successful. Um, now, the, uh, uh, now some, 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 of the, uh, some of the implementations, some of the things that we would expect on desktop applications were not, were not, uh, were, could not be migrated very cleanly on the server-side applications, right? A lot of the things that we would expect and take for granted on desktop applications, you know, being able to drag things around, uh, that it would be very responsive when you, you know, when you interacted with the desktop application, uh, were just not, uh, didn't have the same feel uh, with applications that were running on server-side applications, right? Uh, you know, obviously we, we couldn't because uh, client, uh, desktop applications are running on our local machine, right? They're, they're only dealing with us. Right, we are the only client that the desktop application is dealing with, right? Whereas a server application, right, is not, doesn't only is dealing with us, right, uh, you know, interacting with the application, but it's also dealing with other thousand users who are also interacting with the same application, right? right? So, um, so certainly we, 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 we didn't have that kind of immediacy, right, that we would, that we were expecting from a desktop application. Right, so that was one of the one, one of the uh, it, it, uh, you know limitations. Um, also, uh, you didn't get the same uh, immediate immediacy of being able to drag things around and the dynamic things that we would expecting with desktop applications, right? Uh, you would expect that you would be able to drag things around, move things around, right, and be be able to configure your user interface and have a very fluid uh, user interface. So that was also one of the things that you know was missed out on on the server side. Um, and uh, so, so some folks started to look at, you know, how, how could we make the experience, the user experience, better? Like, how can we make it so that it's more fluid, you know, more responsive to the user, uh, user events? Uh, and they started to say, well, what if, we, uh, what if we could move some of the logic, right, some of the rendering logic and, and away from the, from the server side, right, and move it over to the client? Right, so how could, how could we do that? Well. It, uh, already there was a, a, a lot of a huge community of folks um, uh, implementing uh, some client-side application using a, uh, a, the JavaScript uh, programming language, right? Uh, the JavaScript programming language allowed you to uh, dynamically interact with the, with, the, uh, with, the, with the browser, right? Be able to dynamically uh, add content, remove content. Uh, it was mostly used for um, at that time, or you know, way back when, uh, for for doing you know client side validation, right? When when you, if you were typing a form, right, it would highlight certain things because certain things were required, or you type something wrong, right? Uh, and and we would do a lot of client side validation so that uh, we need, we 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 would validate the data before sending the data over to the server, right? Making sure that we had all the required data, that the data had the correct format and whatnot. It was a good practice to do all that validation early, right? As early and as often, uh, way on the client side before we sending bad data over to the server. The server then complaining and sending back some, you know, complaints. The data was no good, right? Uh, so JavaScript, you know, definitely uh, grew uh, a lot in, in, in that space. Uh, but you know, surely, uh, uh, as as there was more and more demand on moving desktop. Uh, heavy, you know, applications over to 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 to, to, uh, to a uh, to the web, right? New techniques were were, were being uh, explored, right? Uh, one one of the uh, uh, big techniques was that um, uh, for a completely different reason, uh, um, uh, JavaScript uh, because of because it became more and more the the web became so much so much uh, uh, the place to be. Uh, for many companies, there was a lot of competition between the Microsofts and the Sun Microsystems and uh, and the Apples of the world and uh, on, on you know how is that we want we want to be on that space right uh, and and because this 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 there was, there was this this competition amongst uh, so many vendors uh, there was there was a lot of fragmentation 
on the JavaScript language, right? You know, some vendors would implement it one way, some other vendors would implement it some other way, uh, and, and the poor developer uh, that was implementing uh, their code that was supposed to run on the browser, right? Uh, what didn't know what browser who uh, you know, who was going to execute JavaScript using whatever browser, right? Uh, here's a developer writing in JavaScript, and uh, and and unfortunately, IE is the one who's running this, and it doesn't have this, it doesn't have this other feature, it doesn't have it has its own little quirks, right? Uh, so it was it was it was a very big challenge uh, from the, from developers to be able to support this new plethora of of browser uh, vendors, right? Uh, and each and each, each each vendor might have different versions of the same browser, right? And the JavaScript uh, uh, language had different versions of the different vendors and the different. Uh, 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 so it just became a nightmare to be able to uh, to code uh, in in JavaScript. Okay. Uh, so so a lot of libraries were created to 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 deal with this issue, right? Deal with all this this um, the splintering. Uh, of these JavaScripts, uh, la uh, the JavaScript language, and libraries such as jQuery, right, and many other uh, libraries came into came into uh, being, trying to solve uh, a lot of these these uh, early uh, challenges, right. That uh, what jQuery did is is a little bit what Java uh, tried to do for the operating systems, right. What Java tried to do was, hey, uh, you can code one language, right, and and uh, you don't have to deal with uh, what, whatever operating system you're going to run this, right? It's going to run on any operating system. Any operating system where you have a JVM, Java will run there, right? That was the, that was the pitch, right? That was the sale, sales pitch, right? Uh, code ones run anywhere, right? Uh, well, jQuery is the same thing, right? It says uh, the same issues that you have in JavaScript and the, the different versions and different uh, uh, different browsers trying to you know, uh, support different features of the JavaScript language. It's a nightmare to code. Hey, guess what? Instead of coding to JavaScript, code to jQuery. jQuery is going to do all the all the hard code for you, all the uh, all the hard work for you, figuring out which browser version uh, you're you're running, uh, and it'll do the right thing. So many libraries started to come up uh, uh, to try to make. JavaScript easier to work with, okay, uh, and so so the same the same things that kind of worked or or or, or uh, happened here on the server side, you know, trying to create layers of abstraction, uh, creating frameworks, okay, creating architecture of frameworks, and how do is that and best practices uh, that that uh, were developed over you know several decades, right, uh, here on the server side. Started to be migrating and, re, and be applied again here on the server side. Okay, you know things such as you know the model view controller. Right, that's a very common design pattern, uh, architectural design pattern that is widely used on server side, uh, um, you know, large applica server side applications. Well, uh, same thing. As as more interest started to uh, be on the JavaScript side. Uh, we see we saw a lot of frameworks, new frameworks pop up in the JavaScript space that implements some model view controller architecture, right? also on the on the client side. Okay, uh, such as uh, things such as injection, right, and uh, or inversion of control, right. Those, these are all uh, very very common uh, um, uh, uh, skills, right. That uh, that. Uh, uh, were born here on the server side that have uh, little by little made them their way into the client side, right? Um, and if uh, and, and and today, uh, you know, a lot of the, uh, the interest is is being here on, on implementing a lot of the client side rendering. The server side still there, the server side still there, but mostly providing the data, the, the data that the client side needs to dynamically render things on the client, right? The data still lives here. You still need something, someone to uh, query our database, right, and provide and expose that data to the client side for rendering purposes, right? And and certainly that that will be our focus uh, this this semester as well, right? How is that we're going to create a data model here on Mongoose, uh, MongoDB, create a RESTful API that exposes that data model uh, so that then a client side can then access that data. 
dynamically and then render that content over here. Okay. Uh, today, uh, a lot of the interest is on creating what are called uh, single page applications or SPAs, right? Single page applications, uh, which are uh, you know basically you know, like the name suggests, right? They're applications that are built on a single page, right? Uh, that you navigate to a particular page, typically the index page, right? Uh, and then from there on, uh, the browser never navigates away, right? It always stays on that one page. Uh, and then dynamically, using jQuery and other uh, frameworks, right? It dynamically adds and, and removes and updates contents to give you the, the, the semblance of navigation and, and, and dynamic um, uh, content uh, rendering. Um, uh, I think I think the uh, the, the, the first uh, single page application that I saw uh, that, that at that time I guess blew my mind and, and just made me completely think of, of rethink uh, web applications was um, uh, Google Maps uh, and uh, you know the, the first time I, I, I grabbed the map and I just flicked it right and it just you know just animated and, and it was so dynamic uh, especially because I was uh, I was uh, uh, I always used MapQuest. Right? I don't know if anybody remembers MapQuest. Uh, and back then, MapQuest, the their implementation was that uh, you know you had the you had the map, right, and you had you know buttons that would allow you to pan left, pan right, right pan up, down, right. Uh, and every time you click the button, the whole page would be rendered, right. It would generate a request to the server. Right, it would identify the new image, right? Would download it, and it would display it for you, right? And you could zoom in and out. Uh, so, I mean, it gave you all the use cases that you ever need. You could search uh, addresses. It would give you uh, directions. It would give, you know, do all do all the things that Google Map could also do, right? Uh, but put side by side, you know, Google Map. Uh, you would go to this one page, right? Uh, and and, and you know, just the fact that you they, they added this this uh, direct manipulation user interface right that, that you're manipulating the not not indirectly this is an indirect manipulation right you you click right and something happens right and then uh, and then it gets rendered here you're, you're touching right you're, 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 you you have this, this this sense that you're touching the data right? you grab it and you jiggle it and it moves with you right and then you flick it right and it says how they do that. Right, so so it was really really interesting to look at uh, and ex and explore behind this. Right, all the requests that were being sent in the back. Right, uh, the browser sending all these uh, additional requests, downloading all these images. Right, you know to fill in you know, to fill in all the blanks. Right, because obviously uh, it looked as if they would they would they had downloaded the entire uh, map of the world. Right, you know they was, uh, but obviously they did. Right. They, you would flick it, and then it would generate other requests to fill in the blanks, right? So, uh, so that implementation, right? That's that's a kind of uh, immediate response, immediate user experience that you want to uh, that, that that folks were looking for, right? Uh, in, uh, in, uh, in in these uh, more modern kinds of applications. So, so uh, definitely, uh, uh, Google was, was one of the uh, pioneers of, uh, of of creating these kinds of single page applications. Right now, they have a plethora of of products, obviously, right? They're all built on this, uh, on this new idea, right? Of the of everything in single page application. You still navigate, right? You can still hide and show and and, and view diff uh, see different views of the application, but you never actually leave that first page that you ever that, that you landed on. Okay, and that's where we're going to be focusing most of our time uh, on this on this on this course. Right? That makes sense. Awesome.